As a perfusionist, we look after cardiopulmonary bypass. Plus, we also look after cell saver, intratic balloon pump, ECMO, impeller. What you see here in theater is just a cardiopulmonary bypass. And we have a lot more other external stuff. Cardiopulmonary bypass is used for all open heart surgeries, except off pumps. Again, we are on standby for off pumps. Have you guys have any idea how the heart lung machine works? When you look at the heart from the SVC and IVC, the blood drains into the right atrium from the right atrium to the right ventricle. So before blood going into the right atrium, we put a cannula in there, it's a venous cannula, and drain the blood through gravity. Blue indicates venous, red indicates arterial. The venous blood from the right atrium drains by gravity. It's just a collection chamber. It can hold up to four liters, and it got a filter as well. It can filter up to seven liters per minute. Once it's filtered, the blood stays here. From the reservoir, goes into the roller pump. Roller pump acts as a heart. The flow is calculated with the patient's height and weight. That's why when, we, when the patient comes in, we look for height and weight. So that's a very important because everybody, anesthetist, perfusionist, everybody works on the patient's height and the weight. Because that all the drugs on the anesthetic side is calculated by the weight. So with the height and weight, we calculate the body surface area. With the body surface area times 2.4 liters per meter square will give us the cardiac output. So that's what you can see it on there as a blood flow. Once the flow is generated, it goes into the oxygenator. It looks quite small, but when you open it, it's about like 2.5 meter square membrane, which is condensed into a little pot. That works as a lung. This oxygenator chamber has two sections, heat exchanger and the gas exchange system. The first is the heat exchange. Hot water from the heater cooler goes into the oxygenator. So first, the temperature changes takes place. So when you go on bypass, if you want to cool the patient, normally we cool down to 32, the cold water is circulated, blood is getting cold. When the blood goes into the patient, patient gets cold. So when we start rewarming, the hot water is circulated from the heater cooler to the oxygenator, the blood gets warmed up, and then the patient gets warmed up. First, the heat exchange takes place, and then the gas exchange. So when you come to the gas exchange, so that works as a lung. So that's like, I said, like 2.4 to 2.5 meters square. It's a bundle of fibers. It's a microporous hollow fiber membrane where the gas passes through the membrane, blood passes outside the membrane. There is no direct contact between the blood and the gas. So just like the natural lung, the diffusion takes place. You can see the green line. That's where the oxygen goes in. And then at the bottom, there's another hole. That's where the CO2 comes out. So this oxygen comes from the central, goes into the blender where we can individually control the oxygen and the CO2. We got FiO2 and the gas flow. Depends which one do you want to control, you can control it. So normal ratio is going to be to start off with one to one ratio. So one liter of blood and one liter of gas flow. 60 to 70 percent of oxygen. So we do the first blood gas and then from there we titrate it. And also from the blender it goes into the isofluorine. Flows through the isofluorine and then back into the oxygenator. The anesthetic gas is mixed with the blood, sorry, mixed with the gas, and that gas goes into the blood, get mixed up, and then goes into the patient and keeps the patient asleep throughout the surgery. There's another indication for having using isofluorine. If the pressure is too high, so we can use isofluorine to get the pressure down. It's an arterial vasodilator. Once a gas exchange takes place, then it goes into the red line. That's the arterial line, which goes into the patient's iota. Pretty much we're taking the blood from the right atrium putting into the iota. We bypass the whole cardiovascular system. That's why it's called as heart and the lung bypass. And we have few safety system on this one. One is the level sensor, it's a bubble detector. When you, when you go on bypass or during bypass, we're meeting at 4.5 liters flow. That means 4.5 liters is coming from the patient, 4.5 liters is going back to the patient. So we hold the level about like, between, anywhere between 500 to a liter, depends on the patient's volume. If for some reason, accidentally if the venous line comes out. So if that reduces to one liter, your pump is still flowing at 4.5 liters. So that can empty the reservoir or it can drop drastically. Or sometimes the venous line accidentally comes out, the air can come straight in and the air will go into the circuit. To avoid that, we have the level sensor that will stop the pump. If this fails, if the air enters into the system, it will come through the arterial line and that's where the bubble detector is. So bubble detector will stop the pump. We have continuous blood gas monitoring as well. As a CDI, we got arterial shunt sensor and the venous cuvette. Arterial side, it's monitored every two seconds and the venous side is monitored every 10 seconds. On the venous side, we get 
venous saturation, hematocrit, and hemoglobin. So venous saturation is really, really important. Arterial side, we get pH, PCO2, PO2, bicarb, base excess, and potassium. potassium. And we have suckers. The first one is a vent. The second one is a sucker. So vent is a low sucker, which is inside the heart. It's inside the chambers. Cardiotomy sucker, it's a high sucker, which is in the pericardium. That's why it's very important we check the suckers before we go on bypass. The college recommends it has to be checked with two people. So that's why we and the scrub nurse will check together. Make sure volume is coming to the pump, not blowing to the table side. And that will be catastrophic. We have to heparinize the patient, four milligram per kilogram. And we wait for three minutes for the whole heparin to be circulated throughout the body. We do an ACT. The protocol says 480 seconds. So after 200 seconds, we can use the suckers. But to go on bypass, we need to have 480 seconds. The next one is the cardioplegia. Here we give blood cardioplegia. So four parts of blood, one part of cardioplegia. We have a concentrated cardioplegia back here. The end product, what reaches the patient's iota would be 20 millimoles of potassium per liter. That's why you can see there's two different size of tubing. So this is four parts and this is one part. You can see a wine, that's where it gets mixed up, goes into the heat exchanger and goes cold. Control screen where you can monitor bypass time, total bypass time, total cross clamp time, total circulatory rest time and post cross clamp time as well. That's called as reperfusion time. And we have temperatures. We can monitor the temperature which is going into the patient from the cardioplegia. On the oxygenator side, we can monitor the temperature which is coming out from the patient, that's a venous. And also, we, we can monitor the blood temperature which is going into the patient. We have pressures on this monitor, pressure coming out of the oxygenator, and the pressure going for the cardioplegia. I believe I covered everything. Hope you all enjoyed the session.